Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Sala, you knew his shit, man. <laughs> That's an artist. <laughs> How do you do? We're about to unfold the story of the Bride of Frankenstein. She's alive! Alive! A monster created from cadavers out of rifled graves. A tale that sent my blood into icy creeps. <laughs> Would you like to hear what happened after that? Well, we've warned you. You've been warned. Welcome back to the Frankenstein Minute, the podcast that dissects the Universal Frankenstein series minute by minute. I'm Bill Evenson. And I'm Tom Lang, and we are now at minute three of Universal's 1935 Bride of Frankenstein. We're not on minute 74 of Fra- I'm, I'm not going to be able to forget that. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> if you'd have told me, I would have played along. <laughs> That's all right. All right. We're doing fine. Okay. There is. We finished the first film, and now we're on minute. We're on... Minute. This is Frankenstein 2. Yeah, electric Boogaloo. <laughs> electric Boogaloo. <laughs> that kind of works, because he's electric. Yeah, see? His, his mother was uh, the lightning. Lightning. I blew it. Lightning. Yeah, Lightning. We're in the company of one George Gordon, Lord Byron, and Percy Bish Shelley. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, but Graham Chapman pronounces it that way in Does a he? Monty Python episode, so I'm going to go with Oh, that. really? Yeah. Where? Oh. The ant, buying an ant episode. Oh, he does? Yeah. They're in a, okay. I haven't watched that one in a long time. Did you get the box set? Not yet. Oh, oh my God. Have you? Amazing. You it's amazing. It? Gorgeous. Really? Yeah, I'll bring it, I'll bring it yeah, in. It's right over there. Yeah. I am going to get it. Uh, I think it's really it re- really uh, striking that, that you, can't st- you can't start talking about this minute without mentioning Lord Byron. Like, Lord Byron is well, the star the, of this minute. He's the star of the minute. I mean, and this is how the movie starts. The first dialogue, the of, first thing we see. first thing we see is a medium shot of him yeah. rolling his R's like Eartha Kitt and Batman. Yeah, like maybe the fourth word of this movie is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's amazing. He's yeah. perfect. And uh, I, I'm sorry if I'm stepping on what you were trying to say. But, I don't um, even know what I was trying to I, say. I, I just I noticed something that I never noticed before, and I th- it was because of my... Am I still mic'd up? I'm looking for my cord. Yeah. No, uh, you've, my been off, you've been off mic yeah, for I, the last you three recorded, episodes. You haven't yeah. recorded me for months. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and nobody's noticed. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so as part of my research on this, I I, I found out I didn't realize that uh, one of the striking things about Lord Byron, one of the most important things about him, was his limp. Oh, he had a pronounced a limp, and I never noticed that he oh, limps yeah, across yeah. the screen yeah. in this until just now. I mean, uh, Frankenstein Minute listeners will know that we watch the minutes before we prior, talk about him. Prior to and talking, I didn't notice yeah, until yeah. just now. Yep, he had a club foot. Yep, uh, he lived from January twenty second, seventeen eighty eight to April 19th, 1824. So he's only 36 when he died. Yep. Uh, his father was Captain John Mad Jack with air quotes, Byron. <laughs> I want my dad to be called Mad Jack. <laughs> you have no, nothing to, you know. Yep. No, I want him personally to be called Mad Jack. You want to be called work Mad Jack? I'm going to work on that. All right. Yeah. People call me Mad Bill mainly, yeah, but I, mean, I want to go Mad, Mad, Mad Jack. Jack Mad Jack is way it. better. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Jackie could be called Mad Jack. Oh, there you go. Right. She'd like that? I don't think she'd like that at all. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> she's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't stay stuff, say stuff because my wife listens, so uh, I want to be careful of what I okay, say. Okay, so no Mad Dawn cracks. No, no I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing staying in. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of this random, is getting cut. Random. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, Mad that, Jack, Mad, Mad Jack. Jack Byron. I like the name. I like the way he says his name. You know, the unbowed head unbowed of George, head of George Gordon, Gordon, Lord Gordon. He just got this whole <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Gavin Gordon, the actor, he's great. Mm-hmm. I, I think the real Lord Byron was kind of an asshole. Mm-hmm. Couldn't have considered the first pop star. I think you say the first asshole. Well, <laughs> no, that goes way back. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Genghis uh, Khan was, yeah, an he was an asshole. Let's see, how far, how far back do we go? The Papa Picasso was never called an asshole. <laughs> What's, it's a song. Jesus Christ, is that a song? It's what a song. From? It's in Repo Man. It's uh, yeah. Okay, that's I know it. <laughs> yeah. I just I, when you said it, I'm like, where is that from? I haven't watched. Re- it's so weird. Repo Man is such a weird thing in my head because I've seen it thirty times, oh, yeah, seen it but I haven't time. seen it in twenty years. Oh really? It's sitting right here. I, I watch uh, it. Another disc in the pile. Throw it on the pile. I watch it every year just as. 
reminder of what can be done with limited resources. Yeah. At home, uh, you can make an amazing film with almost nothing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, this is a good yardstick. Uh, a friend of mine who won't be listening named Wayne Charter was my buddy back in the 80s. And I remember, because sometimes people ask you, what's your favorite movie? Yeah. And I, I don't ever know how to answer I that. So I remember I, one time I asked him, I said, what's my favorite movie? And he said, Repo Man. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good choice. I like that. I went and saw it. It was at the Uptown when it came out, the weekend it came out. Jeez. 1984. And I was in a, a play in college. I think we were doing Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat or some piece of shit. Like that. <laughs> and I went, fan, I went eh? to it in the, they had like an early screening and then a, the, the mid-afternoon screening. And I loved it the, so much the first time. I sat through the second and was late for my call for the, uh, for the production. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Repo Man is a, is a classic. I yeah. like that uh, periodically you'll see Mike Nesmith will have a Repo Man t-shirt. Yes. When yeah. he's like playing he's, it on stage yeah, yeah. with the monkeys. Yeah. Still. yeah. That's pretty cool. He's very proud of his well, involvement be. as he the should, producer he of should, Repo he Man. He should definitely be. And That's he plays Cox a rabbi. too, right? Huh? We, you mentioned yeah. Alex Cox. Yeah, already yeah. The, yeah, yeah. this is gonna be alex yeah, cox, alex heavy, cox uh, movie. heavy bride of frankenstein i don't know movie. how on earth it's happened twice already in the three <laughs> weeks we've been doing this but yeah well next next week i'll mention straight to hell and then uh <laughs> okay. Sid and Nancy. Yeah, yeah yeah we'll get there gavin gordon playing uh lord byron yeah he's great he's fantastic he's what, what he's being asked to do oh that's i started that wrong that's not really the way of saying it it's an odd thing to do. It even gets mentioned in uh, one of the books I was looking at. But it's a silly thing to do, to ask a character to announce who people are in the room. It is. So I'm, like, I'm going to say, and you are great too, Tom Lang. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, just silly. It is a and thing. And this is one of those rare cases where you pull it off because he's just so He's so theatrical top. and so theatrical. fruity and yeah. 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 yeah, no, he, he makes it work really well. Uh, he had quite a career. Is that right? 109 credits from 29 to 68. A lot of them are, are things we've heard of. 29 to 68. So yeah. Karloff's career, really. Basically. So he's a contemporary, contemporary of, Karloff. of Karloff. Was he in Targets? Uh, no. He's not, but I think he was in a film with Karloff, other than this one. <laughs> okay. I've got him listed. Should I go for it? Yes. It's a lot. You decide whether to cut it uh, out. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom of Crestwood, which is a really nifty little thriller from Warner Brothers in the early 30s. It's got a really cool flashback device. Does he have a limp in that? He does not. Okay. He's in Mystery of the Wax Museum. Oh. A couple of... Hitchcock film, Suspicion and Notorious. Dang. White Christmas. Wow. Uh, High Society. Ten Commandments. Oh, my God. Yeah. A couple episodes of Perry Mason in One Step Beyond. Uh, a movie called The Bat with Vincent Price and Agnes Moorhead. Wow. Pocket Full of Miracles, which I believe was, uh, wasn't that Frank Capra's last film? <laughs> yep. I think so. I don't know. Uh, Nutty Professor and the Patsy with Jerry The Nutty Lewis. Professor? Yep. My God. Yeah. A couple episodes of Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Petticoat Junction. Okay. Yeah, he had a career. Wow. Uh, born April 7th, 1901. Died April 7th, 1983. I call that perfect timing. <laughs> I want to die on my birthday. Yeah, that's the only way to go. Perfect. Well, I was born on April Fool's Day, so that'll oh, be a see, great day to that die. That would be perfect. People would be like, no. Yeah, yeah no, he's not. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Uh, he was a uh, partner of uh, Edward Everett Horton. Okay. So he was a homosexual individual. Uh, yeah. That's oh, what, oh, I What see. I was inferring. Yeah. I don't know. He was a partner of partner, Everett part, Horton. Yeah, they, were, they were life partners, whatever you want to call I don't know who Everett, Everett Horton is. You don't? Who's that? Did you ever watch uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was uh, the Fractured Fairy Tales. He was the narrator. Oh. He was in huh. a ton of movies throughout the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Okay. He's in an episode of Batman too. Wow. I look, see, this is what, again, I've said it before. This is why we do this podcast, just so for I can, me. I can tell you So you can things. tell me this cool shit. <laughs> okay. And point out things that I need to watch. <laughs> All right, and uh, and I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that I don't think these people would be well-known today were it not for Mary Shelley. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless you were an academic and, and studied you know, English literature or poetry, why on earth would you know who Percy Shelley is or, or Lord Byron? Yeah, I think that's probably right. I get the impression that Byron it would probably be you know, remembered. Be remembered, but I don't think in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, um, this is you know, the this, this the big the, event. The big event. That's if summer. we were to accept the, the that this is actually Geneva, this is the big event. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if we've said if yeah. people don't know what we're talking about. This is uh, in history the 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 birth of Fran uh, the idea of Frankenstein is uh, during that great storm. The summer, that, the, the summer, summer without a summer. 
the year without a summer 1816 uh young mary shelley 16 years old was she 16 at that point yeah right yeah. and lord byron and percy shelley and john, a couple other people john polidori who are missing, yeah who aren't in the scene who i notice aren't in my notes so oh, maybe i put john, maybe i talk about them next time john polidori see. was uh byron's was byron's doctor quote, and personal physician personal and physician only, i don't know what all that entailed yeah but he was obviously uh the impression i get is he, he was uh an admirer of, of Byron. He yeah, really and I think I think Byron sort of used him as a buffoon or a yeah, you know, kind of would do jokes at his expense and, and right. things like that, and was sort of not the nicest guy to Polidori. Okay, Polidori was just desperate to be his friend. Yep, basically. Right, yeah, basically. And the other one not mentioned uh, or shown here is uh, Mary's sister, Claire. Her, her, not her real name. Not her real name. I can't remember. Is it <laughs> I Jane, either. I think? Or something, something like that, that yeah. <laughs> Claire Claremont, Claire, I think. Claremont is, her is, is what she called herself. Um, so you got your Claire Claremont, who is uh, with uh, Byron at that Byron, point. Yeah. And uh, Percy, Mrs. Percy B. Shelley is with Percy B. Shelley. But and she's then, not Mrs. yet. She's, no, she's not she's Mrs. yet. She's still Mary Godwin. And then you got your Polidori, and they're all in this uh, villa in uh, well, Geneva. Well, the, the Shelleys stayed in a different villa that was within walking distance, but okay. most of the time they would converge at this the Villa Diodati um, okay. and spend most of their time there. And, and it they, was storming all the time, so they couldn't go outside, couldn't right. do much. And they found this book, Phantasmagoriana. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that it was like a, a French translation, I think, of German ghost stories, something like that. Do you remember this thing? It came out last year. That this. magazine? Like, yeah. the, remember, there's a really good, it's, it's all really, it's, really summarized it's, it's really, really well. It's, in what this. he's holding up is the Life yeah. Life Magazine special 200th anniversary issue, uh, Frankenstein. Yeah, bought it at the grocery store. Oh, yeah, I got it at Walgreens, yeah. Yeah. No, I actually got it at the airport going out to California. No, I, not the last trip. But. I received it as a gift from Did my you? son. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's sweet. This is a good call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. he knows you. Um, <laughs> uh, but it does a really good summary of the, yeah, the whole sort of the, the story whole, of yeah. uh, of how this came to be. And it's interesting because it, it they're 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 locked in, as you say, into this into this situation where it's just raining and there's nothing mm -hmm. to do but sit around and talk all the time. And they stay up late and they drink too much yep. and they do they I propose, would assume there were other illicit proclivities. substances and other proclivities involved. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of proclivities. Yeah. And there's a challenge made that everyone needs to write a ghost story after reading this yes. phantasmagoriana or whatever yeah. the hell it is and mary for days according to her yeah according to her fails she can, is, comes up with nothing we we have most of our information on this this from actual her. event from her from the uh, introduction to the 1831 revised edition of frankenstein where she recounts this but there is evidence that this actually happened so it's yeah. not just her making it up so interestingly Polidori produces. Yeah, he's the only. He comes uh, up right away. He's yeah, got at least two ideas because yeah. she mentions a she completely mentions different one thing. She mentions one is a weird thing, the skull lady or yeah. whatever, and then something called the vampire, the vampire. which. Uh, you know, people who, who follow Dracula and vampire lore, they really, really credit this as a as a Insp landmark. Inspiration for Bram Stoker. Uh, definitely an, yeah. an inspiration for Bram Stoker, but just a just landmark, a landmark in vampire literature yeah, yeah, in uh, general. altogether. Yeah. yeah, you can draw a straight line from this to Dracula, yeah. and nobody knows who Polidori is. He doesn't make this film. He's no, not in not it. He's in not in the film. scene. Yeah. That's not him going out of the movie with the dogs. Nope. <laughs> It's not. Even, it's not clear either. He's not significant enough to make this scene, and he no, and he basically they, wrote Dracula that day. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't well, know. He didn't write Dracula, but, but he, he came up with the notion, I think, of the romantic vampire. That's what people say. Yeah. 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 He is. Uh, his name is used in uh, that uh, Frankenstein: The True Story. Okay. As, as sort of the Pretorius character in that is okay. Doctor Polidori. That's cute. Yeah. That's a good. So idea. That's a nice like little that. throwback. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a nice way to acknowledge him. You gotta acknowledge these people because so few. <clears throat> of them lived beyond yeah. you know, the age of 26. Yeah. Speaking of living <laughs> did he, did he 26. Did he drown or is that Percy uh, Shelley? Shelley? Percy Bish Shelley. Bish. I, I'm, that's what I said. It's it's what Graham <laughs> Chapman Graham says. Ch that's hey, what I, I'm not arguing yeah, that's Graham no, Chapman. No higher authority nope. than Graham Chapman in this house. Uh, August 4th, 1792 to July 8th, 1822 when he drowned while boating. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what he was doing and it was stormy and didn't heed warnings. And uh, he, he strikes me as very reckless and mm -hmm. didn't really care what... Uh, Anything other than himself, really. It was very, it seemed very selfish and very self-centered. It's a, it's um, an interesting story. Uh, he meets Mary because he is uh, Mary's father. 
Mm-hmm. What's his name? Godwin. Yeah. Um, Whatever. Can't his first name. Uh, yeah. They're they they're associates in some way. Is yeah. it, uh, not well, his teacher, but something yeah, like that. Sort a of a mentor, mentor to him. Yeah. And then uh, Shelley and and uh, and Mary hook up, mm-hmm. and Mary's immediately dismissed from the family. The father's yeah. fucking pissed yeah. off, yeah. and you have to leave. Mm-hmm. So they're they're and they and Percy doesn't. Well, and Percy exactly... was married to another That's woman right. at the time. Yeah. So throughout this whole summer, when they were in. Switzerland, he's still married, was only when his first wife committed suicide, pregnant, Mm. no less, Mm. than like days later, like literally like three days later, Mary and, and Percy got married. So yeah, there's just the story is full. Like this, this uh, period, I guess, from 18, say 15 to maybe 18 or whatever, is full of this. All these back and forth rumors about about Claire Claremont maybe being with Shelley. Yeah, Uh, Shelley encouraging uh, Mary to be with this other guy. guy, I can't think of his his name, name, but yeah. I mean, it's just a bunch of back and forth, and everybody's going crazy. And throughout all of it, you know, what what results from all this? Strangely enough, is Dracula Dracula and and Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. But then Mary lives. I mean, she, she lives through it. She's his, sort of the only one that... She lives to be 54, 53, I think. She lives to be real old. Old. Yeah, like an old lady. 53, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, she's my age. But compared to everybody else in the story, I don't think everybody was, else is dead no. by then. Yeah, I think um, she, was, she, was, she outlived everybody. The only thing I was going to add to what you were saying about Percy Shelley is I think it's interesting that people back then generally uh, didn't know how to swim. No, that was... It's just, what's an odd well, thing? We talked about that with little Maria in Frankenstein, oh, that right. it was not common up until leisure time in the late 50s for people to learn how to swim that way. Swim as recreation and exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, Supposedly, Shelley is the co-author, quote, of Frankenstein, and that's in dispute both both ways. The facsimile copy that I have of her handwritten things, uh, his contributions seem mainly just little grammatical corrections and sharpening some ideas, but overall... it's her book. Yeah. Come on. Well, she's a writer. She she's, goes on to write other she writes, stuff. She wrote that I several read. other novels. She wrote I, a bunch of stuff I haven't read. Yeah, she did. This is really, honestly, the only thing of hers I've ever read. But I've which read is it. odd because I, if you actually uh, if you actually look up her, like her Wikipedia entry or whatever, uh-huh. she's it's considered it's not considered her best work. Like apparently she's actually done. She becomes a better writer as she goes on. Technically, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, the ideas, the ideas here is, are the, yeah. pretty crucial. Yeah. So that's important. And then she rewrites. It yeah, she years re- later. Re- re- revised it in uh, 1831. So yeah. So I th- I think he just he kind of acted more as an editor and correcting a few things here and there. I really wouldn't consider him a co-author personally. But and yet his middle initial gets credit he, in and the she first doesn't. film. Yeah. Yeah. Douglas Walton, the actor who played him, is pretty good. Looks looks a lot like the real Percy Shelley from paintings that I've seen and such. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I saw the is, paintings just looking at them the other yeah, day. He They're in that, that book, that Life yeah, magazine. Thing. Yeah, he has sort of that fake quality that sure. I would attribute to to Shelley. Yeah, he, he apparently it. wasn't much of a. I, I don't know. He he, he didn't. Uh, they seem to always be in financial trouble. Oh yeah, is the impression. Yeah, I they were always one step ahead of creditors. Right. Up until he died, and then I think once she became a published author and had some income from that, she did all right. Yep. But uh, yeah, well, yeah, it seemed like just reckless. Mm-hmm. He was very seemed very reckless. Uh, kind of weird to sort of think of Mary Shelley and think of this, like this is what I think about is this scene. Yeah. It, it probably for her her life it was probably a really short very minor. You know, yeah. Mi- I wouldn't say minor. No, she not probably, minor, probably but huge, time but wise, I mean. Yeah. 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 Yeah, really not, not a minor incident, but just a very minor yeah. amount of time. Right. And, and I guess, I mean, she it's not like she ended up in Geneva by mistake. No. This, it was a very, the impression I get is that Claire and, and Mary very deliberately pursued yes. Byron and Shelley yeah. and that lifestyle that we're talking about. Yeah, sort of the bohemian sort of, Yeah, they were sort of iconoclasts. And, right. Uh, and I'll have more to say about that, I think, next minute. Do you? Okay. Because there's some... Uh, well, I was going to talk about dialogue about it. Douglas Walton here, who plays Shelley. Mm-hmm. Thirty credits from thirty-one to fifty. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, the thirty-one. Uh, mm-hmm. Frederick March, okay. Scarface, Wow, Lost Patrol, also with Carla. Boy, Charlie Chan in London, and these are only ones that I really recognize. Yeah, Charlie Chan in London, Mutiny on the Bounty from thirty-five with Charles Lawton. Wow, yeah, uh, Raffles, The Letter, Murder My Sweet, which is a great Philip Marlowe uh, film noir. Okay, it's. Uh, Dick Powell, he's great. And a picture of Dorian Gray, wow. of all things. Yeah. Born December 16th, 1910, died November 15th of 61. Real name was J. Douglas Duder. <laughs> or you can call him his Dudeness, Duder El Duderino, if you're <laughs> yeah. not into the whole brevity thing. Yeah, not into the whole brevity thing. 
Boy, you know, so yeah. they do that uh, uh, seven degrees or six degrees of Kevin Bacon or yeah. whatever. Yeah, you six degrees uh, of Boris Karloff. Basically, what you need to do is just, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Boris Karloff. I was going to say this movie, but yeah, yeah, Karloff in particular. Yeah, because I think almost all of these people worked with him more than once. So Yeah, I guess so. I mean, from what you're saying, yeah. it sounds that way. Yeah. Uh, something I, I think is interesting in the script is uh, uh, the script refers to Mary's fragile blonde beauty. Yeah. I think that's really odd because she wasn't She's blonde. Blonde. She's not here. Yeah. But that's fine. That some people think that's fragile. So they put it in the script. I guess. I, I also like Balderston or, or Hurlbut that did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mary Shelley was not blonde, neither is Elsa Lanchester. Right. With red exactly. hair. Which photographs very dark on uh, Yeah, Lanchester. I don't know her from a lot of stuff actually. I know her from Murder by Death. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a great movie. <laughs> yeah. I saw it in a theater recently. I did yeah, oh like did you recently? Oh did you? I saw it when it came out in the theater, yeah. I made my parents oh, take boy. me. Because oh, Peter Sellers was in it, and if Peter Sellers was in it, I made my parents take me to it. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff in that. I saw it in a double feature with Clue. Oh yeah. Which I thought I, I I thought this is a terrible idea because I love Murder by Death and I don't care and for Clue. Is, yeah. And I was wrong. It's yeah. a good way to it's a good way to do it. If you're gonna watch Clue, yeah, sit down and watch Murder by <laughs> Death and then watch Clue right after okay. as a double feature. It doesn't That's, suffer in comparison. It, it doesn't. Because I've always felt happy that, that you don't care. Okay. Because I always felt you Murder by Death. By, Murder by Death is vastly superior. It's vastly superior, but you're experiencing, you know, you're not, you're, you're you're not disappointed by Clue. You're, you're enjoying it. You're because riding you're in that the right, high. You're in the, yeah. But you're also in the right frame of mind. I guess, They're very yeah. similar, they are, it's a similar in tone. They're not it's the same that, film at all. In no, anyway. not at all. But they're similar in sort of tone. I don't know. Anyways. Anyway. The, also in the script, uh, Byron, when Byron says uh, she's an angel, uh, Mary responds, you think so. But it, then she, she, goes she on. reads an excerpt from a poem by Percy Shelley. Yeah. She says, lift not the painted veil, which those who live call life, though unreal shapes be pictured there, and it would mimic all we would believe. And then he moves on. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it, it would feel really weird yeah, to have that in the movie. It, it, but yeah. um, it's, it, it's funny that you talked about Shelley and, her, and uh, his influence as an author of this work, because that poem, that line, mm -hmm. those three lines are about Frankenstein, essentially. Are they, you know, it's they, the same they idea. Fit the, fit the, they fit. Yeah. Yeah. They fit the tone or the, the, tone the theme of Frankenstein. Yeah, but they chopped it out. There's a lot. There's that a lot seems to be yeah, chopped coming out up in, in the here. next minute. I've got quite. I think a bit. you've got. You've got. Uh, me, me too. Maybe yeah. we probably got the same notes. Yeah. But you've got the storm, the sound of the storm, the music, and all kinds of ways to make it really make it really easy to cut those cut things around, together. Yeah. Like as we were watching it, I was thinking about it because I have notes about it. It doesn't feel awkward. No. At all because they keep cutting back. Keep and forth. cutting. Yeah. You can the see next, the lines next cut scene, out left and right. The next scene, it's even more prevalent. And There's a lot more stuff cut out, I, yeah. and you can, if you know to look for it, if you know where the cuts, the mm -hmm. stuff is cut out, you say, oh yeah, okay, I see why they cut to that. Right. But it doesn't, it's not obvious if you don't know, yep. you're not watching it like, huh, that's a weird editorial choice. Right. It's like there's a moment in, in Young Frankenstein, we we'll jump ahead 10 years now, <laughs> and uh it's we'll be dead. We'll be dead by yeah, the time we get to that. I would think so. He uh, he's doing the uh, the charades, you know, the the set to give thing. Mm -hmm. It's one long continuous take. There is a brief cutaway to Terry Gar going, oh, and her hair is different, and she's in a different costume, <laughs> and it's because they shot it in. They didn't do any coverage. Yeah, and they needed to cut out a little bit because it was running long. So. It's like, well, shit, what do we do? So we had this other, we pulled in this clip from another scene and just to bridge that, that gap so there wasn't a jump cut. This doesn't play like that at all. Not at all, no, ex exactly. Yeah, it's, it seems perfectly yeah, normal. Like, and I, I, I think it's partly the storm and the Well, it's, and yeah, the music it, it, it smooths out the soundtrack yeah. a little yeah. bit. That, to me, that's something that really uh, stands out. I've, I've, I've talked about The Godfather. Uh, one of the things I like to watch, and I've been watching it lately, is the uh, the novel for television, they call oh, it. The, 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 now they call it different names. But yeah. it's they, they include a bunch of deleted scenes, and they put it in chronological order. Is that on the, the Blu-ray set? No. Thing? I had to... I'll get you a copy All if right. you need one. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you have to get it somewhere. All right. You can't find it. Okay. It was on HBO a couple of years ago okay. in HD. But um, one of the things they did was... I. I feel like uh, Coppola made the the decision to to make it more accessible. The scenes that take place in uh, with D Robert De Niro's section in the mm -hmm. I was at the 20s or 30s or yeah. whatever to overdub the dialogue in English, and mm -hmm. it takes me out of it. It's not oh, just really? the fact that it's English because nobody speaks English in that section in the yeah, original film right, at right, all. Right. I mean, it's like one line, I think. Yeah, I'll take care of everything. Other than that, the rest of it's in, in Italian. Italian yeah. um, but also just that 
I can hear overdubs. Oh, when, yeah. When, you can when, usually and when tell. I, yeah, you can usually tell, and it's all it's it's very distracting. Yeah. And yeah, that point being, point being none, this, of, that none of that is here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, it's funny because I realized I didn't put it, I didn't have any notes on this, but um, at some point I was going to mention if you if you look up Mary Shelley on IMDb. Mm -hmm. The first credit is Young Frankenstein. Is it really? Yeah, I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, and then as you're scrolling down, uh, another one, another interesting credit I noticed was Mary Shelley's Frankenhole, which I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah I guess that counts. It does. Yeah. Um, nice little shout out there. Too. Yes. Well, yeah. yes. Dino Stamatopoulos's Mary, Mary Shelley's, Shelley's Frankenhole. Frankenhole. We all love we that all show. Love that show. <laughs> Um, so we talked about well, we talked you, about Polidori, um, Shelley, uh, Wollstonecraft, Godwin Shelley, right? Born August thirtieth, seventeen ninety seven. Oh, so she was eighteen when she wrote the novel. So and died February first, eighteen fifty one. Eighteen when she wrote the novel. Eighteen when it came out, probably right. It came out in eighteen, eighteen eighteen. And she was oh okay. So she would have been what twenty? Okay, not quite. I don't know why I'm quibbling. She was a teenager she when was she a wrote teenager this. Teenager when she wrote point. this book, and it's one of the most profound in influential books in, in English literature which yeah. is amazing and um, in popular culture pop culture I mean just look at the the impact this has had and that's all we have left is pop culture the yeah. as, as has been evidenced by uh, everything we see on the news the the yeah. world is coming to a flaming horrifying end and all we really have left is Frankenstein yeah. and joy that's the only joy the there only is joy left, left in the left. world yeah. <laughs> so thank you Mary Shelley thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> And she is played here by Elsa, uh, Elsa oh, yeah. Sullivan Lanchester. Sullivan. That's her middle name. Okay. Uh, 99 credits from 1925 to 1980. If you want them, I got a whole big thing here, a whole card full of credits. Um, is Murder by Death on there? Murder by Death is the last one. Is that the last it's one? It's not her last thing, but it's okay. the last one I wrote down. I mean, this, this doesn't cover... Charles Lawton? She was married to Charles Lawton. O old know. Dark House is Charles Lawton. Right. Who directed Night of the Hunter? Night, Night of the Hunter. Yeah. I knew you'd know if I paused because yeah. he only directed one thing. Yeah. I don't know why I'm. See, this is this this. Okay. <laughs> so you, you want to talk about sexism? Me? You want to talk about innate sexism? I you don't, say Elsa Lanchester, and I get all the way, and I drag us over to Night of the Night Hunter. Night of the Hunter. <laughs> How awful am I? Talk about Elsa Lanchester, please. Well, I don't know what kind of marriage they would have had because he was also. I don't know how openly gay, but he was gay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, and I don't know her proclivities, what, yeah. what her leanings were. Embroidery, from what I can see. Yeah, she likes to do needlepoint. Needlepoint. <laughs> so maybe maybe they had uh, Ernest Thesiger as a creative consultant for that scene when she's doing the needlepoint because he had actually written wrote books about it. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, anyway, getting ahead of ourselves. Slightly. But you can't talk about him too much. No, you this, cannot. In season two uh, of Frankenstein. No. Minute. I mean, I could go on and on. There's a whole page here I have of her. What credits. are the best? What are your favorites? My favorites. What are your three favorites? Oh my God! Bride of Frankenstein, Bride Murder of, by Death, Murder by Death, um, oh, Bell Book and Candle. I really like. Okay, She's yeah. in that. Mary Poppins. Hard to not like Mary Poppins. Yep. She's in that. That darn cat. One of the best movies huh. ever made. No, but uh, no, I but remember no, it's good. Yeah, kids. yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I won't, I won't bore you. You won't, you won't. Endless. We're done. List of credits. All right. Yeah. What do you got? Well. Uh, we talked about The Vampire, written by uh, John Polidori. So this is, I, I think it's kind of interesting. There were some Catholics in Quebec who were offended by the original movie Frankenstein's Divine Presumption. Do you know what I'm going to say? I think so, but go ahead. Universal's T.B. Fithian, <laughs> who I believe also <laughs> is known as Ted Fithian. <laughs> Uh, screened the film, the original 1931 Frankenstein, for a couple of Catholic priests in Los Angeles who suggested, uh, Fithian suggested to them a suitable foreword or some preface that would indicate the picture was a dream. Perhaps we could open it on a book with the off-screen voices of Shelley and Byron and Mrs. Shelley discussing a fantastic tale and dissolve into the picture. So whoever the hell T.B. Fithian is, he's <laughs> list, he's got a credit on like, uh, you know, one of these, you know, some of these later Universal uh, Lon Chaney Jr. films, Yeah, I think. the 40s, yeah. Yeah, in the 40s. He, he came Look up with this idea and her... He's credited with this idea, and apparently the thought is that Whale liked that idea, and yeah. that's why it's here. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but I, it's it, an interesting thought. You know, Whale liked it. There's always the quote, I think Mank has said it a number of times in, in books and um, documentaries and things, that very pretty people can come up with some pretty awful things. 
was sort of the whole idea behind the scene. Huh. Take from that what you will. That, that absolutely seems to be the whole point of it. Yeah. We're, we're, we're definitely treated to, uh, you know, the elegant three we in their elegant, elegant surroundings. And, and we haven't talked, the spoken about Una O'Connor, of, really. Well, but, she, um, she appears for like a second. A second. She's, she scene. was in last week and this week. She yeah. disappears quickly. Yeah. But I always wondered, I think not since it's been on Blu-ray, but when it was on, v, like say VHS, when uh -huh. I couldn't see it that clearly, I thought she looked like she was on wheels. She kind of yeah, just, just zzz, pulled through. out of the screen with those dogs. But when I watch it on Blu-ray, right. it looks like she, she she's is walking, just walking. Actually, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> a little personal reflection there on we go. Connor's performance. <laughs> That's what you got? Anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, done. All right. That's it. Do we want to talk about the fact that we have uh, the Patreon? Oh, people will know that by okay, now, they? Fine. We're not going to... We can... Uh, not going to bore them with the fact that for $2 a month... Right. ...they can get the uh, episodes a day early on Frankenstein Thursday, or... No, we won't mention that. We also no. won't mention the bo uh, stellar bonus content yeah. that we've, we've received uh, kudos I, for. I believe it's been referred to as a treasure trove. A of treasure bonus. trove. And, and the, I've, it's locked. It's a locked, it's locked treasure yes. trove. And, and then... Two dollars will unlock it. Yeah, but we don't need to go into that. No, we wouldn't. I mean, we don't want to, you no. know, hit people over the head with no, it. No, we'll leave it be. That's right. And then and remember, Frankenstein Minute is free. The podcast yes. itself is free. It'll, so it'll it'll be free forever. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> went really well. <laughs> oh shoot. Pablo Picasso was never called an asshole.